Hey guys, in this video I'll cover 11 of the most commonly asked JavaScript interview questions and I'll show you how to answer each of them with just one line of code. First, write a JavaScript code to check if the input date is a valid date. Let's start by defining a function and call it is valid date. You can choose any name for this. The function will take a single argument date. So this function uses the new date constructor to create a new date object from the input and then calls the getTime method on the date object. The getTime method returns the number of milliseconds for the given date. This is none function is then used to check if the result of getTime method is not a number. If the result is not a number, the function will return false, otherwise it will return true. Now let's check if our function is working by console logging it. Let's pass in valid date format. That returns true. Our date is valid. Now let's pass in something invalid. And that returns false. So our function works fine. Write a JavaScript code to determine the day of the year for a given date. So let's call that function day of year. And it will take in a single argument. Let's call that date, which is expected to be a JavaScript date object. Let's use the math.flow function to round the number of days down to the nearest whole number. Inside this function, let's perform some calculations. Let's create a new date object for the first day of the year of the input date using the get full year method to get the year of the input date and pass zero for the month and zero for the day. This calculates the number of milliseconds between the input date and the first day of the year by subtracting the first day of the year date object from the input date. Then it converts the number of the milliseconds to the number of days by dividing the number of milliseconds per day which is 1000 milliseconds per second, dividing by 60 seconds per minute, dividing by 60 minutes per hour, dividing by 24 hours per day. So if we run this function, it will return the day of the year as an integer. And there you go. Write a JavaScript function to capitalize a string. So at the moment, JavaScript does not have an inbuilt capitalize function. Let's create one and call it capitalize and it will take in a single argument. Let's call it input string. Let's call the char art method on the input string to get the first character of the string and convert it to uppercase by calling the to uppercase method on it. Then let's concatenate the capitalized character of the input string with the rest of the string by calling the slice method on the original input string and passing one as the argument which will return a new string that starts at the second character of the original string. Now if we call our function and pass in some strings, the function will return a new string that starts with a capital letter and the rest of the characters will remain the same as the original input string. There you go, our H is now capitalized. Write a JavaScript function to remove duplicates from arrays. Let's say we have the following array of numbers. For instance, let's write a function to remove the duplicate numbers. Let's call the function remove duplicates, which will take no arguments. Now let's return a new set object with a new set constructor and pass in the numbers array as an argument. The spread operator converts the set back to an array. So a set is a data structure that stores unique values. When an array of numbers is passed to it, it automatically removes any duplicate values. Now this function will return a new array that contains only the unique values of the original numbers array with all the duplicate elements removed. Let's run the function and pass our array variable inside. And there you go. You see all the duplicate numbers are removed write a function that checks if a number is even or odd. This is a common question. So let's call the function is even and that would take a single argument. Let's call it number, which is expected to be an integer. 
we will use the modulus operator to check if the input number is divisible by two if the remainder is zero then the number is even and the function will return true if the remainder is not zero then the number is odd and the function will return false Let's use the ternary operator to check the value returned by the function. If the function returns true, it will log out even number, else it will log out odd number. Let's run the function and pass in random number. Let's pass in 4. Number is even. Now let's pass in 7. Number is odd. Write a function to scroll to the top of page. So let's define the function and call it scroll to top. It takes no argument. The function will return window dot scroll to method, which is a inbuilt JavaScript method for scrolling an HTML document. The function takes in two arguments. The first one is the horizontal position and the second one is the vertical position. So Let's pass zero as the first argument, which set the horizontal scroll position to the left most position. And then zero again as the second argument, which set the vertical scroll position to the top of the document. So this code will make the page scroll to the top of the document. The effect will be the same as if the user had manually scrolled to the top of the page. Write a JavaScript function to copy a text to clipboard. Let's call the function copy text and it will take an argument text which is expected to be a string. So the function will return the navigator.clipboard.write text method to write the text passed as an argument to the clipboard. The navigator.clipboard object is a web API that provides read and write access to the clipboard. The write text method writes the given text to the clipboard. This function can be used to copy any string passed as an argument to the clipboard. However, note that the navigator.clipboard API is an experimental API and may not be supported in all browsers. So it is recommended to fall back to other means of copying like document.exe command or input.select. Write a JavaScript function that converts rgb colors to hex colors so let's call our function rgb to hex this will take in three arguments r g and b which are expected to be the integers representing the r which is red and g green and blue values of a color respectively so the function will return first a string of this hash character which is usually added to the start of a hex string to represent a color code in the hexadecimal format then we will concatenate it with the combination of the red green and blue values in a single integer then dot to string method which will convert the combined integer value to a hexadecimal string then to slice method which will remove the first character from the hex string this operator is called bitwise or bit shift which is used to shift the bits of the red green and blue values to the right by 24 16 and 8 bits respectively so if we call this function and pass in some rgb color values it will convert them to hexadecimal color code and return the values and there you go now note the input values has to be in the range of 0 to 255 for the red green and blue values otherwise the function might return unexpected result Write a function that will generate a random hexadecimal colors. So it's kind of similar to the previous one we've just done. Let's define the function as random hex colors. It takes no argument. So we will generate a random number using the math.random and we will use the math.flow method to round it down to the nearest whole number. The number we will generate is between 0 and 0x. Zero fff 6 f here which is the maximum value of a six digit hexadecimal number so we will call dot to string method to convert the random number to a six digit hexadecimal string then we will use the dots part end method to ensure that the hex string always has six digit by adding zero to the end of the string if it is less than six so if we call this function now, it will return a random color code in the hexadecimal format. 
and there you go. Obviously, we need to add the color code to some HTML elements to see the preview of the colors, but that will be for another video. Extract properties from an object. Let's say we have an array of objects like this, and we are expected to return only the items. We will simply define a variable to store our items, so let's call it items, and let's map through the array using the map method. Let's create a new array variable, stocks and extract the item property from each object into it. Now, let's log out our items variable to see the extracted values. And there you go. I hope you found some value in this video. Please don't forget to hit the like button and help the channel grow by considering to subscribe. Thanks and I will see you in the next one.